Hi there, my name is Shirley, and I am a proud member of the Native American Indian Dog Preservation Project. I am Night Eyes Nates and have been actually breeding these dogs since 1974, established the Preservation Project in 1997. I've had quite a few people ask me about the puppy culture protocols that we use with the socialization of our puppies. And so I figured that I'd go ahead and just give you a brief run through of the workbook. Um, all of the breeders use the puppy culture methods. Some choose to use the DVDs, some use online courses. I'm a visual person, so I need to have the materials right in front of me with easy to read drawings. I'm a simple person, what can I say? And I am not a video videographer, so please excuse the quality of this video. So I'm just gonna go ahead and turn this around, excuse me, and then see if I can get this on. There we go. Sorry about the stuff on the, ooh, hello, what are you? Sorry, that doesn't belong there, dang it. Okay, there, sorry, I'm not redoing the video. So, this is who I am. My days. Been around a long time. Most of you know me, or at least you've heard of me. Could be infamous, could not be infamous. I'm also a poet and didn't know it. Um, anyway, so this is the book. It's an 18 chapter book. I'm gonna briefly go over the chapters and hopefully not bore you too much. And please excuse the lighting. Um, I'm not really set up for video yet. So um, the chapters are as follows. We have prenatal, which is chapter one goes through basically the things that you need to get when planning your pregnancy, the whelping box. Uh, most breeders or a lot of breeders use the Dura whelp, which is great. And then the things you'll need for this week, which would be the non-slip runners for wood floors, exercise pins and baby gates to create safe areas for your bitch, thermometer, whelping box, whelping supplies, stock refrigerator and pantry items, and frozen meals for you because you'll probably be up, be up for at least four days um, waiting for puppies. A TV set is good too. <laughs> just saying. Um, I'm gonna I'll change this around here so much so you're not looking at all my stuff my work table as I am not a professional. Um, so this is what we have in chapter one and you're gonna find in this chapter um, at a glance prenatal period it's outgoing plan 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 and it tells you all the breast bre breeding plans, be uh, bitch and season plans, ovulation, pregnancy confirmed, day 57 of pre uh, pregnancy and labor and then general to do's and considerations for the entire week and the biggest thing is right there's your breeding plan to network with local breeders that would be us the Native American Indian Dog Preservation Project we all stay we all stick together we're all basically on the same page as far as what we want to see the uh, Native American Indian Dog accomplish and that means working together as a team or a tribe so in this book here, we just have, like I said, do this. I mean, this is really pretty comprehensive ideas as far as how to have a successful delivery and not be caught unawares. So, um, two, no, chapter two is neonatal, um, and it tells you exactly uh, what you're going to need for the uh, days of one to 14 days old. Um, and that would be hospital pads for obviously for cleaning up after puppies, platform for the dam, cosmetic sponges or supplemental feeding, scale, bumper pads, case of baby wipes, replacement formula ingredients, mother's milk pudding, which is for the mom to keep her nice and healthy and, and well uh, conditioned. I'm gonna, there we go, that makes it a little bit better. Um, eggs and sugar, and that's for making the, go, the um, mother's pudding. And then it tells you when you see this, do this. And it's going to give you a whole suggestion of things that you can help to get the mom. Is say, for example, if she's outside the puppy box, how to get her to stay in with the puppies. Um, and then we have a general to-do for dogs, to-do and considerations for the entire week. The way that puppies uh, always provide an, provide an escape route for your dam. Yeah, you don't want you know her to feel like she's trapped with the puppies. Not good. Um, and it says only touch and stroke the puppies as much as the dam will will permit. Sometimes the, the dams are really, really, really protective. Generally, it is very hard to be able to touch any puppies until like maybe day two. Um, that will give her time to 
recover from the whelping. Um, we try to assist as much as possible. Sometimes the, the girls just do not like their puppies touched, so we try to respect their wishes. Um, we start the early neurological stimulation on stages, stages, excuse me, on days three to 16, and this will give you guidelines on how to do this and to determine if puppies are thriving and not stressed. Um, and so they have a guidelines on how to properly do that without overstressing puppies. And then um, the, um, you know, your puppy pee pads and, you know, putting up your bumpers. And here's some uh, recipes for mother's pudding, which of course is for mama. And then if you have puppies that are not thriving, you can go ahead and bottle feed them. And then you're given a recipe that also will help you to be able to supplemental feed, which we do this a lot. It, it takes some of the strain off the, the dam. And there's recipes for homemade, and then you can also get the, um, the already, you know, made. <laughs> and then we have um, uh, chapter three is uh, approximately four to three day old puppies. It's called transitional. It gives you some new things that you're gonna need for that week. Um, toys, um, I, items that have texture, uh, what they strongly suggest during this time frame is to avoid bright light. So we try to keep our puppies, or we do keep our puppies, in a dimly lit room. We do have music, but it's very low. And um, we uh, just try to keep the puppies um, feeling safe. And it says some puppies can have negative reaction to being handled when very young and even younger than three weeks old. Their reactions that range from growling or screaming. I've had a screaming puppy. It's not pleasant. Um, our survey of breeders indicates this is not usually correlated with any adult's personality traits. Um, hypothesis states that the maturing neurological system may cause the puppy to have some extreme uh, re reflective responses. Um, and then they tell you how to deal with that. Um, in this age, we start introducing tactile items, just stuffed animals, plushies, squeaky toys. Um, we um, get them used to having their bottoms wiped after they you know, go potty so that they stay nice and clean. Um, we try to give them one new experience each day, and that could be putting your puppy in slippers, which is like, um, it's shown right here. Well, I'll move the camera. Put a puppy in a slipper, and especially if it's a cozy one, they'll love it. So we put our puppies everything uh, into everything from slippers, onto pillows, um, onto blankets. Um, sometimes even go in the bathtub. All depends on if they're dirty. Um, so they have you know cautions. Um, again, they still talk about not handling the puppies too much at this age, and if the mother gets upset. When the mother's upset, she passes that on to her puppies. Um, so chapter four is uh, socialization, week one. And week, every week you're going to introduce different types of uh, experiences for your puppy. And um, we try not to over stimulate them, of course, but in week one, we're gonna give them like different introductions, different treats, um, start letting them taste different textures. For example, would be like the canned cheese or the whipped cream whipped cream, and then the uh, cheese whiz. Um, and we put on music, of course, with this Bluetooth, and then uh, we have a blow, uh, blow dryer, vacuum, bumper crate mat, uh, litter box. We start let, getting them used to a litter box. Uh, pellets, tiny toys and soft obstacles, and sound mats, like squeakies, and then raw and meaty bones. Um, at week one, they're not gonna really do too much with this stuff, but we, we introduce it anyway. Um, and then we, they have the do's and don'ts for an entire week, which really helps. Um, we start doing a startle response in week one. Uh, and so we are actually learn how to um, handle and see what their startle response is going to be at that week. Um, we have, uh, we don't play our music too loud. Um, and we, we really watch that startle uh, reactivity to the music. Um, then we have, um, we start giving them like a mush, uh, usually at week two. And this will explain about that. Uh, it, it, this also explains about when the teeth start erupting. That's when mama starts wanting to kind of wean them, um, is when those teeth, when those puppies start weaning, are, are developing their teeth, when they're cutting teeth, that's when mama starts getting a little bit 
where she doesn't really want to spend too much time with them. Um, so we always kind of have our fingers in our puppies' mouths a lot to determine when they're starting to pull up cut teeth. Um, they start there with the puppy treats again with the, the cheese whiz. Um, socialization period two, week two is in chapter five. Um, again, we're still the, we start them in a, a kitty pool, weather permitting, of course. Uh, start introducing them to a weaning pin, interact toys like a shelf snuggle mat, they call them. Um, low climbing objects, a clicker, a box for box game, and we usually put the plastic balls in it. Um, exercise pin and golf tees for a scent circle. And then the grooming table. I don't start the grooming table at that early. Um, they have a um, at a glance it's called it's a problem solver. It's like run, running to uh, finish the uh, food dish. Then we uh, put up a barrier challenge to prevent them from getting well, just to slow down. Um, or when they're busting out the, the uh, whelping box. Um, and so we have we do um, you know each of these exercises each week according to what the book suggests. Uh, we have the clicker, I've already mentioned that. We have the scent circle, well, I've already mentioned that. And then uh, we start doing what we call it is CER, um, is a um, pick up, intermit, interrupt and treat, a touch of body parts to travel. This, we usually do this with a Q-tip. Uh, gently restrain and treat and then we put them on the grooming table or a high surface, higher surface, not too high where they can fall off. Week three, we go into socialization again, and we do a lot of socialization with our puppies. Um, and then we're going to go with the on, it's called ongoing training. Um, with the, um, when you, uh, like for example, desensitizing and also temperament testing. It's a little bit young for this, but we do start this and we kind of note and we'll write down we have a puppy's of running towards and interacting with new items placed in pin. We'll mark this down. Uh, enthusiastic excitement about taking treats from hand. We'll also, we will uh, grade them. Um, litter squabble, we'll see who's the troublemaker in the group. We always note, note that, that's important to know. Um, also, one puppy runs uh, roughshod, runs roughshod, not sure what that is called. I think that's being too rough. <laughs> <laughs> at this age, mom is starting to think about weaning the puppies, and this is at week three. Um, in week four, we're going to actually raise surfaces. So you're going to have your um, hammock bed, they call these, and then the crates. The puppies are being introduced to the crate. Uh, we're putting good snacks and things in there. And then this is called a soft balance a disc, or we call it a wobble wheel. And um, that way they get to learn, uh, well, different how to keep their balance. We want to see how balanced they are. Um, and these are this we're starting into evaluation. And then um, we have, say for example, uh, we have one puppy that wants to go and hide underneath the chair when you have them out, say, in our enclosed puppy area, which would be, in our case, the dining room. Uh, if the puppy is hiding underneath the chair, then what we're going to do is work with that puppy a little bit more to find, see if we can get him to, him or her, to uh, get over that, um, you know, that unsure uh, disposition. Um, then we start again with the uh, uh, scent circle, it's called. And you put different scents on these little golf uh, tees and um, have the puppies try to search it out. Um, at this age, we will go ahead and start looking at structure. Um, now, we're not going to have your puppy um, uh, setting up like a show dog on a grooming table, but we will be able to evaluate the structure, which you can see here. And you're going to want to be able to see the length of the, bo the body type, you know, how the, the hawks are. Um, we don't breed show dogs, but we still like to know what the structure is and determine if they'd actually be an asset to continue in the breeding program. Um, and then we have the, the it's, a, it's like an obstacle course. And we'll have them actually see if they can work themselves out of a, um, well, like an obstacle course and see if they can figure out how to get around something instead of, you know, asking for, you know, mom or, or you know, a human handlers to help them out. They've got to figure it out themselves. So we want to see how intelligent they are and their ability to be able to reason and, um, you know, get around a, a, an obstacle. <laughs> and then we also have the little wobble balls with the treats in there and see if they can figure out how to get the... Um, um, treats out of the ball and sorry this is taking a little bit longer than what I thought um, 
Just some more stuff that we do, model behaviors. When the dam is starting to wean puppies, what do you do? Um, that's when it starts getting interesting because she's get to the point where she starts getting grumpy. She doesn't want anybody nursing on her. Um, then we have chapter seven is week four. And this is where it really starts getting fun because puppies start developing their own little behaviors and, and actually they start looking like little dogs. So we can, um, and they are interacting now with, with us. So um, they have pop quizzes in this book. And then take, taking your puppies out for car rides. Um, sometimes we'll do this, sometimes we won't. Um, that they have been been at le in bleh, sorry they've been in a car at least once or twice in a crate. Most of the times they're crated at home when we feed them. Um, at this age, we introduce them to cats, which you can see the kitty. We have cats. Puppies all get to meet the cats. We also have different types of, of little bridges um, and things that they can climb on. We want to see how well they're going to navigate that. Um, it's uh, new uh, how to approach new people, animals and objects with no fear plus. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, we do have one of these little um, circle things and um, they actually have a lot of fun with them. There's usually three or four of the uh, puppies that are in this little cir circle barrel and open it on both ends. Lots of fun. I have some videos on that. <coughs> excuse me. Um, we, they suggest puppy party. I don't do it because I don't want to introduce them to un uh, dogs that are not part of the property. Um, puppies and hardy enough to go outside are actually allowed on to run our one third acre. Um, they only are allowed to um, go out when they are supervised. We have ground squirrels. Now I don't think that a ground squirrel is going to attack them, but you can never tell. We also have hawks and owls, and they would love to make a meal out of the um, puppies and carry them off. Um, we also have some crows that really get pissed off if you get too close to their nests and they will die bomb them and peck them. So we always ha allow our puppies, um, or only outside of the supervised, of course. Um, we have different obstacles. We have the red flags. Uh, the puppies will be introduced to umbrellas and um, big balls and a another adult dog. We have, have a silken wind hound, which is a, it's a sight hound and she gives them a run for their money, literally. Um, we have, um, let me see what we're dealing here. Um, and this is where we, we're open up umbrellas in front of them to see their puppy, puppy responses, their startle responses. Um, uh, hey, we have a, uh, a tarp that they can go in and out of it to put over the, the barrel. And so it makes a lot of nice crackling noise. They, they like that. Um, when they get to be a certain age, they're actually really, really um, enjoy any type of challenge like that. We have a wading pool that is full of all different colored plastic balls, which I really like to use for photographing them in. Um, and um, we, um, here's something, this is good. Um, this uh, caution, caution, allow your puppies to tug on the toy fabric, but do not pull back or hold. Hold the toy, up, uh, toy object as low as level to the puppy as possible. Allow the puppy to tug as much as they like, but don't pull or jerk the tug object back. Review the guidelines out in our puppy exercise booklet and stick to them. Um, and these are always done one-on-one. -on -one. Um, we do teach our puppies to, uh, uh, they know what a collar is. They, they learn to pull a leash. Um, and we do do some formal leash training uh, but we leave that, a lot of that up to the owner. Um, when you pick up your puppy, I will show you how to, that we have taught your puppy to, to walk on a leash. Um, your puppy is not going to be automatically leash trained or crate trained when you get him. That will be up to you because at eight weeks old, there's only so much that their mind can comprehend. So um, we do not over, over stress our puppies. Um, but um, they're introduced some quite a few different unusual things here. <laughs> vacuum cleaners, noisy kids, fire trucks. Um, we have, um, we're across the street from a school, so definitely have um, lots of noise. Uh, we have a boat in our backyard. Uh, it's not fancy like that one. It's actually an old rec uh, boat that we use for photo shoots, but the puppies are used to that. Um, and um, this book will continue to talk about do's and don'ts. Um, we don't have chickens, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, 
We don't. Uh, we do have uh, introduce the puppies to the LC, the backpacks, LC vacuum cleaners. We do allow our puppies to play around with again the silken wind hound and with the other nades as well. Uh, we have uh, uh, Pink loves little puppies. She will go out of her way to um, to like roll over and let them crawl on them. Um, this is at the age that if we were going to take them to a vet, petting zoo, and if we had a llama, we'd certainly introduce them, but we don't have either. So we just rely on what we can do here. Um, I have take, in the past taken the dog out uh, puppies in the shopping cart. The only thing that I have found is that they tend to get a little bit overwhelmed after about 15 minutes, especially when you have everybody want to come over and cute, pet the cute puppy. Um, so we do have a wagon on property that I use, get some used to the motion. Um, at this age, at seven weeks, is when you want to vaccine um, the core vaccines. Uh, should be done at six or seven weeks. Sometimes the breeders will take them to the vet. Uh, sometimes the breeders will vaccinate themselves. Um, if you have the experience and you feel comfortable vaccinating, you know either one is a, a viable option. I do both. Um, this is, would be the age where if you're going to want a water dog, that you're going to start getting them used to water sports. We do have a little waiting pool for that. Um, if we have some dogs that they want to be, uh, that the owners want to be uh, introduced to a harness, we do have a puppy harness where they can pull like a stuffed animal around. Um, our dogs are introduced to a crate. I said they will not come to you crate trained, but they will be familiar with them. Um, that uh, they're, they're fed in the crate. And um, we um, do not, as I said, we do not socialize our puppies off of the property. I've been uh, criticized for this, but we also live in an area where parvo and other um, diseases, viruses are prevalent. We live in the country. Uh, there is livestock here, and there's a lot of stray dogs, so we do the best to keep our puppies safe. Um, this puppy culture book, and then I'm going to be wrapping this up as a long video, um, but it comes with a whelping chart, so you can determine the day of whelping based on the last or first day of breeding. The temperature chart, we take the puppy's temperature every day. Um, we uh, have the whelping record, of course, how many puppies, how many in live birth, how many you know puppies that didn't make it. A supplemental feeding chart, you have some puppies that thrive, some puppies that don't. The puppies that don't thrive, then we supplemental feed them with a bottle or a feeding sponge. The weight, uh, the ENS chart, basically seeing their startle response, and all sorts of stuff. Wormer vaccination record, really important. Um, this, we actually start deworming puppies with um, Strongid um, at, or Pyrantel, we also call it, at two weeks, so that's two, four, and then six weeks. Uh, at eight weeks, we give them a three-day um, uh, treatment of um, Safeguard. And um, then we do have a fecal test done. If a fecal test comes back negative, we're very, very happy. Where we live is farmland. We do have Coccidia and Giardia on the property. And sometimes they will, even if they test uh, negative on their flea, fecal, or excuse me, if they're <laughs> their fecal exam, they may test positive when they're on their property. So puppies should be dewormed every, every three weeks. So, um, Anyway, or depending on what your vet's protocol is. Ours is a little bit different. Um, and anyway, I think I've pretty much given you the basics, but a lot of time and energy goes into the raising of the Native American Indian Dog Preservation Project puppies. And this is uh, the book. So I am very happy that uh, you're still listening to me. I would have probably... <laughs> <laughs> left the conversation a long time ago. Anyway, this is Shirley from Night Eyes signing off.